The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of puck talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks, go. Begsy, I got a theory, okay? I got a big theory, a big one, a big one, a big one. And it involves Elias Lindholm. I, I kind of understand why they're making him play on his own line. Do I agree with it? No, I don't. Uh, how's your day going? It's going great, man. The sun is shining, and uh, we're about to get into a battle. Who has the better lines? Leaving it up to the listeners. Let's go. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of Locked On Canucks, and also a Canucks writer. For Daily Hive, Vancouver. Before we dive into today's episode, we got to thank you for tuning in to Locked On Canucks. It is your Canucks every damn day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And hey, if you haven't done so already, stop right now and make sure you go subscribe. Give us a like for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. On that note, I'm going to say this a couple more times throughout the week, but we are giving away two tickets to see the Vancouver Canucks versus the Los Angeles Kings at Rogers Arena on Monday, March 25th. If you want to enter the contest, you got to do two things. You have to subscribe to the YouTube channel or leave us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. The second thing you got to do, go subscribe to the Discord, okay? The link is in the bio for that. Join conversation with Canucks fans uh, and learn a bit more about uh, me and Kyle Bowen, okay? Uh Uh, Speaking of me and my co-host Kyle Bowen, we are going to give our perfect Vancouver Canucks lineup for when the team is healthy, okay? Game one of the playoffs, assuming everyone's going to be healthy because they're going to be healthy. It's all going to work out. Mm-hmm, Life is mm-hmm. going to be good for your Vancouver Canucks. We're going to give our ideal lines. Uh, I also want to get into the ideal wingers for Pedersen later on in the show and dive into some of the numbers there. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the Canucks and the Buffalo Sabres, the battle of sad cousins uh, later tonight at Rogers Arena. Before we get into any of that, let me introduce my co-host. It's the battle of uh, sad-looking co-hosts. What's going on? Got bound. Sad-looking hey, co-host. Tired, man. I've never been this tired in my life, dude. Setting up parties, doing this, this, and that. Boom, bam, driving all around. But feeling blessed, man, because the sunshine, man. The sunshine is hitting me and, uh, you know, reminding me that uh, I have it pretty good even when I'm tired. Hey, speaking of having it pretty good, uh, bro, agonizing times to be a Vancouver Canucks fan. What? Look at the standings. We, we, we're good. We're good. But again, agonizing because I'm just stressed. I'm traumatized. And I think I'm also feeling like the energy in the air because it's been such a long time since we've had this. And that's it being the spring and the sun shining and the Canucks actually mattering. You know, I don't know about you, but this reminds me of when I was like nine or 10 or 11 or 12 years old. And it was like four o'clock, a couple hours before puck drop, puck, puck drop during a playoff game. And I'm just chilling with my dad while he's running some errands. And I'm just listening to like, TSN 1040, Team 1040, Sportsnet 650, blah, blah, blah. You know the deal? I'm just getting nostalgic, okay? Anyways, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs. Uh, as Beggsy told you, we are giving away two tickets to a Canucks game. Join the Discord in the link in the bio to uh, qualify for that contest. Hopefully, the Canucks are going into Monday's game on a winning streak. And hopefully, that winning streak starts tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, we'll get more into that game towards the end of the night. Uh, but so much, again, so much going on. We're going to do a line combination special. Uh, but before we do that, I got a theory, okay? I got two theories, okay? I, uh, the first one is if you go to Rec Beach, because it's that time, right? Sun, sun shining. If you go to Rec Beach, the nudist beach in Vancouver, you got to go nude too. Because if you don't, you kind of look like a weirdo, okay? Straight up. Kind of, You know what I'm saying? And my number two theory yeah, is this. You're, okay, you're okay, taking okay, shots at me for sure. But anyway, no, you're of taking course, shots at me because yesterday I said I've I've been to Rec and, and and I did not nude up. But it just depends on the people you're with, man. And you know, Rec Beach, man, it's 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 you can do whatever you want. That's the whole point yeah. of Rec Beach. You try to put your nude rules in it, you pervert, unbelievable, no, man. man. I'm just saying, bro. If you're wearing a hoodie at Rec Beach, something's up with you, man. I was like, what? What? Why are you even here, bro? Yeah, a hoodie's a little weird. A hoodie would be a little weird. <laughs> with your hoodie on, anyways. Okay, here's my uh, here's my second theory. Okay. And I don't know how nobody is talking about this because I like to think that uh, somebody like Rick Tockett is a smart guy, a a lot smarter than everyone here. Okay, for real. And I mean that championship pedigree could have been Hall of Famer on the ice as well. He's got the sauce. And he's got the sauce all while we're confused on why he's not using Lindholm in the quote unquote right way. 
AKA he's using him as a center, a third line center. Boom, bam. Well, why is he doing that? And I was thinking about this. Maybe, just maybe he's doing that. So when Dakota Joshua gets back in the lineup, they can reunite the best third line in hockey, right? Joshua, Bluga, Bluger, and Garland. And what Taka can also do is reunite the lotto line. Maybe what Taka is trying to do is see if there's any chan chance for Lindholm to gain some chemistry with some other wingers before the playoffs start. So they have three lines that can get going. And one of them being not just like one of the best lines in hockey, but maybe the best line in hockey and the lotto line. Because when they're on, they're on. When they're on, they win games. Uh, how does my theory sound? I, I don't really agree with it, but I, I feel as if that's the only way I can justify why Tockett is using this unsuccessful leash that he has on this Lindholm centering his own line type of thing because it hasn't been working, blah, blah, blah. So I, I guess I'm just trying to connect this rationale to that. Damn, Kyle. I don't know. This, uh, this tired brain of yours, man. It's having you fall down the conspiracy rabbit holes, man. Mm -hmm. I know. No, I, that's, that's, that's an interesting theory. I, right. I don't agree with it. And I think I'm going to get into it more in the second segment of the show because, you know, the, the lot of has had their moments that have been good and they've, they've had some bad moments. Too, don't so, you think that's, uh, don't you think that would be the case? Like, let's say Lindholm could find success with pot Coles and Mikheyev or Suter and this, and there's like some chemistry there. You know how it was so improbable for the chemistry to come together from Bluger, Garland and Joshua. Like, what if, what if? Something did happen, and when it happened, it allowed, again, Taka to be way more comfortable reuniting a line that has been dominant for maybe, like, 60 to 70 games through their career together. Like, the lotto line is really, really fun and really, really exciting when they are going. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Of those 60 to 70 games, about 55 of them came in 2019-20, so we're looking at about, uh, you know, four years ago, right? They had a good stretch, mm -hmm. obviously, this season for a week. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just something that talking every time he's asked about it, it seems like he doesn't want to go back to it. Um, I do think he likes having Miller and Pedersen on separate lines. I think he likes his depth down the middle. Um, and you know, Andrew shout out to Andrew makes a good point in the comments. Like Lynn Holmes great in the face off circle. And I think, you know, talk values that as well. Um, so I, I don't think he really wants to reunite the lot of line to be honest. Um, and I think there is an aspect of kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks, right? When I, when you talk about Lynn Holman and his line mates, cause he just hasn't really found chemistry with mm -hmm. anybody so far. And Kyle, that makes me curious because we're going to talk about the perfect Vancouver Canucks lineup heading into the playoffs. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm throwing it to you first, man. What is it? What, what is your perfect lineup for opening night? You want me to go first? Oh, I, I'm down. Um, uh, I'm just being, I thought, I thought, you know, you're yeah, the elder no. between you and I. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not going to touch too closely on the defense, okay? I think pairs three, four, five, six, or defensemen three, four, five, six are going to be somewhat not like in a blender constantly, but I'm just not there yet when trying to like cement what that's going to look like, okay? And that's due in large part to there being seven guys that could play defense yeah. for the Canucks, you know? It's, it's all good. We'll the show. No, no, you can do it. You can do it, though. G give it to the people because you you've been nailing that, okay, on the defense side. You're way better with the D, okay? You know what I'm saying? You you, you just handle the D way better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, that's, that's, why I, that's why I have, you know, mixed feelings about Rec Beach, you know. Got to be careful yeah, okay. about that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah. I'll start with this. I'll start with this. Again, I'm not a big – I'm not a – I don't believe in the lotto, fine, lotto line theory. It would be fun. It'd be cool. Prove me wrong. I just don't think that's a plan. That was just my theory to give – Pocket some props and some cushion because I don't know what the beep he's doing with Lindholm. Anyways, uh, this line may surprise you just a bit. I kind of like Mikheyev with Miller and Besser, man. I do. I do. Oh, that's yeah. That, no, go 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 through your lines. That's uh, interesting. You say that. I think they've had a couple good games together. I think they were on the ice for the only goal against Washington, and when things got put in a blender and rightfully so they got dismantled even though I feel as if again, they had a couple good games together, a couple good periods. I wouldn't mind seeing more of that. Okay. Then you got the obvious one. I think it's the obvious one. It's Lindholm. It's Patterson. It's Hoaglander. Well, let's make Lindholm comfortable. Put him with, uh, you know, his people, the, the Ikea line, the meatball line, whatever you, whatever, whatever you want to call it, do it. 
And then you got the obvious. I hope it's the obvious. I hope there's not a lot of Canucks fans out there who are looking at different combinations, who are looking at like, oh, maybe you should bump up Joshua and have him play with Pedersen oh, when he comes back, blah, blah, blah. No, when Joshua comes back, you reunite Bluger, Garland, and Joshua. Again, I, I, you know what? I'll say this. If you don't think that's correct, you're a dumbass, okay? Like a big dumbass. And then you got the fourth line, okay? And this is this is the interesting one. It is. Because I think it's important sooner than later to get Suter comfortable manning his own line. Because I think if he can do it, the floor of this team raises. But who's around him? I want to say Pot Colson and Lafferty. But to be honest, I've kind of liked the PDG's game lately. Like, I, I I don't know if he's, like, hurt. I know he's not playing. I've seen a little bit of strides in his game, okay? So I'm just confused on who Suter's wingers would be. But uh, you know what? I'll go with Pot Colson and Lafferty. Yeah. I think I think that's it. That, those are my lines. This this is the awkward moment where uh, you know I kind of wanted to go head to head over you know what uh, what what our different lines were going to be, but we have the exact same lines. No way, there you go, dude. <laughs> you know, and here's the thing, right? I, I I thought about different combinations in the top six, but you you look at Pedersen and you're not breaking that Miller and Besser at this point, and that's you know I've taken the L on that one. Every day is no. I was not a fan of Miller and Besser heading into this season. They struggled immensely on the defensive side last season. They've been way better defensively this year, uh, in a matchup role. And that's also the re reason I like McKayev there is because even though McKayev has, you know, struggled offensively, you know, on the season, his numbers actually don't look that bad, but he's really struggled to play. We all know that. But talk about but it. What he no, does but like, bring. But, but re sorry to cut you off, but like, I feel like recently, recently, he's actually been pretty good with those guys. Like, yeah, I, I agree. And, and one of the reasons I do like him though, is because he is a very solid, reliable defensive winger. Uh, and again, the speed hasn't quite been there, but he, he doesn't make mistakes in his own end. Mm -hmm. and when you have you know players like miller and besser who are playing in a matchup role on a nightly basis that's who you want on their line on their on your line and the other options you could face offs that you know neither of them are gonna you know, you know one of those gonna take face offs right so um when i look at the top line it's you know hoagliner pedersen you want those two playing together um, I don't really want to put like Lindholm and Mikheyev with Pedersen because you have two struggling guys with Petey. Um, so yeah, uh, I like Hoogliner and Lindholm as well on that pairing. And then yeah, keep the Bluger Joshua Garland line together. And then I had Pod Coles and Lafferty and uh, Pew Suter centering the fourth line as well. Um, um, I, I I would love to see Pod Coles and play his way up the lineup, but you know, if there's six games, he's been solid, but he's got no points, right? So there's got to be a better a bit of a four. Um, yeah, on the uh, uh, on the offensive side as well, and then I'll touch on the defense quickly. Um, you know, Hughes and Heronic, I kind of said earlier in the season, split them up. But as you're entering playoffs, game one, you got to keep them together. Um, I like Zid I, I don't like the idea of Zadora and Myers being on the same pairing, so I like to see Zadorov and Myers split up. I think both of them are a bit too chaotic to be on the same pairing. Although, yeah, I know it's fun. It's like they're a combined like 17 feet tall. They're on the same pairing together, but. Um, I have Zadorov and Cole. I think Cole has proven he can play in a top four role. I like Cole on the right side there, more experience on the right side. And then I have Susie and Myers on the third pairing. Those are how, kind of yeah. how my deep pair shake out. And, you know, Noah Juleson's ready to step in in case, you know, any one of those four guys falters. Or just struggles, you know, straight up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think so. the leash is going to be really short, man, because I think this team's going to want to see, like, I know it's risky business, but maybe not so much so if, again, Myers is struggling and, Juleson has, you know, showed improvement that getting Juleson into a playoff game slash seeing what they really got in him bodes well for what they want to do in the offseason. Cause I'm pretty sure they got Juleson locked up for next season on a cheap, like one year left, one year left on a cheap yeah. deal. Like yeah. if this guy can handle that type of plug and play and execute, it gives them a more depth going into next season. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I, I saw a really good comment. Okay. Nathan Reed. Agreeing with the the Lindholm theory, okay? Why is Elias Lindholm playing so much, so much time on the ice away from Pedersen? It's been like months, and they haven't played together. It's been like a year. It's been like three years. Well, why is it happening? And I said it's happening because Tockett wants to, you know, see if Lindholm can do it, and that's run a line on his own on this roster so that they can put the lotto line 
back together and use it in the playoffs. And look at Nathan's combinations, okay? He's got line number one, the lotto line. Line number two, Ilya Mikheyev, Elias Lindholm, Niels Hoaglander. In theory, there's like a 42% chance that that could work. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if Bluger, Garland, and Joshua could work like that, maybe just maybe Lindholm, Mikheyev, and Hoaglander would work. Speaking of uh, Joshua, Bluger, and Garland, Nathan has them as a, as their third line. And then he has Pods, Suter, and PDG. Okay, Let, let's touch on Pod Colson. You, you nailed it, okay? For real. He's done well. Like, he's played as good as Lafferty and PDG. I think that's the best way to kind of put it. But we definitely need some points there, man. It was yeah. the same thing with Archie Baines, too. It's like, dude, yeah. raise the floor for us. Don't just be another PDG or Sam Lafferty. Speaking of which, like, Sam Lafferty, what are the chances that he, like, picks it up here? Because he was a completely different player early on. Like, completely different. Yeah, he's got the beard now, so I think there's uh, you know, he's he's trying to change things up, right? You know, if it's not working, you gotta you gotta switch things up. So, look, I think Lafferty, and I don't want to do this before the playoffs start, but kind of diving into how uh, Canucks on this roster have performed in the playoffs. But Lafferty's been there; he knows what the playoffs is, is all about. From being in Pittsburgh, from being in Toronto, uh, not so much from being in Chicago, but from you know Pittsburgh and Toronto. Um, so I think Lafferty knows what to do come playoff time. You do want to see more from him. Um, but I think a lot of Lafferty early in the season was using his speed and being opportunistic. Um, and I just don't think he's, you know, I don't know if he's got an injury, but he just doesn't look as fast as he did earlier in the season. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think Lafferty's got more to give. And, again, he's a guy that's been there in the postseason and knows what needs to be done. Um, Lafferty has been one of the guys who's played on Pedersen's wing this season. I don't think you or I are a fan of it. Um, but on the mm. other side, that's on Pedersen and some of the wingers he's played with this season because uh, – Numbers are interesting, man. And, you know, for those who who missed it yesterday, the lines at practice uh, were Hoaglander, Pedersen, and Garland on line one. Uh, that looks to be the Cucks' top line going into tonight. Um, so we'll set something on the other side, whether that's the right call or not, and how Pedersen has performed with other guys, such as Miller and Besser, as well. Um, before we get to the add two, let us know in the comments, okay? Kyle and I, we pretty much had the exact same lines, okay? We did. We what do you mean? Out. Nobody's in the way. Yeah, we both win. Unbelievable stuff. Let us know in the comments. Again, like Nathan said, if you have a different line combination that you like as well. And I'll quickly touch on Nathan's point that, you know, what he suggested, lot of line, line one, McCabe, Hooklander, and Lindholm line two. The time to try it out is right now, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, there's reasons <laughs> that to be skeptical about the lot of line, but if you're going to try it out, do not try it game one of the playoffs. Try it right now. More mm -hmm. talk about lines, Pedersen's wingers on the other side. Before we get to that, let's shout out our friends at Sleeper. All right, Canucks fans, we got what? Check my watch. 14 games left in the season, okay? And you know what? The Canucks still lead the Western Conference, I believe, by just a hair. You know, regardless of where the Canucks are in the standings, I, I want to remind you that you could also be, you know, a winner like your Vancouver Canucks by playing Daily Fancy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fancy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is my number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey because with Sleeper, you could win 100 times your cash, what, in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like JT Miller, Brock Besser, or Dakota Joshua will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Canucks fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper, so start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See sleeper's terms to use for details and locational availability. Man, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight in Vancouver, all my real fans. We back, we back doing this, and that's talking about your Vancouver Canucks uh, being more optimistic than we were yesterday, man. I saw, I saw a comment, man. Our commenters, our people here that watch this program, they're up there, man. Uh, some of them also in the Discord. Some of them also entering that contest. Because so, to win tickets to that Canuck game on Monday, uh, the 25th, against the LA Kings. Uh, that's like in six days. Uh, we're going to announce the winner on Friday, March the 22nd. Anyways, that comment that got me thinking was this one right here, okay? And it's from Mr. Whale. Look at this. The Canucks fans are crying. Uh, but in March, we've been 4-1-1. One, one. 
Is that is that is that correct? Four one one and like no 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 four one one in our last six, right? We haven't played six games in nineteen days. That's yeah, impossible. They've had, they've, had a lot, they've had a lot of time off. Damn. Let me check this quickly here. No way. That's I, I, all in all. If he's wrong, he's wrong. But it's it's the truth is in our last six games we have four wins. We have points in five. Honestly speaking. I feel like the Canucks have played. Let's do the math. That's 18 periods of hockey. I feel like we played pretty good in 14 of those periods. Realistically. Yeah. Let's win tonight. I completely agree. And we talked about it yesterday. Uh, shout out to the everydayers. They know this. Um, but the Canucks, again, uh, and Mr. Whale is right. Um, you know, the beginning of the month, that road trip against the Ducks, Kings, Gold Knights, and Jets, did they play a bad period in that? entire road trip i don't think they did uh and the jets game was at home mind you but i don't think it was a bad period of hockey in there okay. really it's <laughs> again we it, there's a lot of pressure in this market obviously where it's an educated fan base you out there listening you're a you're a smart fan they've had two bad periods of hockey this month if you want to look at two it and that a half, way. It two and a half two and a half two and a half i'll say two um and a half. sure sure okay we'll go that way okay. um but yeah it was that third period against colorado and the second period against washington right mm -hmm. so um, but again, lots of time off in between games here. We talked about that yesterday as well. So I, again, I'm not overly worried about this team, but I think, you know, some of the concerns about, you know, getting Patterson going, getting Lindholm going, those are things that you want to see happen before mm -hmm. the playoffs start. Speaking of Patterson going, uh, Kyle, based on what you and I both said, uh, the ideal li li wingers for Patterson are Hoaglander and Lindholm. Is that safe to say? Dude, safe to say. And bro, I just seen a little, uh, interview with, uh, Lindholm after practice today and he he admitted that he has to you know do better defensively but uh, no no sorry he's been fine defensively but he has to do mm -hmm. a lot better offensively right and he kind of smirked at a question in regards to him having new line mates again so i feel as if he's probably thinking like dude i know i haven't been at my best this season even in calgary but i'm elias lindholm bro why am i playing with sam lafferty Why'd you trade a first and a third round pick to bring me here to play with Sam Lafferty? No, it's the truth, man. Like, make the transition a little easier. When When is this going to happen? And, you know, a part of me feels as if I'm, uh, I don't know, what, what's the saying? I'm barking up the wrong tree or just saying too much because if I'm demanding that or saying things like, oh, it's not going to change for this team or it's not going to change for Lindholm or this seems going to be uh, a searching for success down the road and not now because they don't put Lindholm and Pedersen together. If I'm really saying that, then what I'm saying is that the Canucks are going to lose tonight. The Canucks aren't going to do well tonight because that combination isn't there. It's saying a lot, but again, I'm just, I'm just confused because I would argue that it is so, so important to get both Elias and Elias really going. You traded a first and a third round pick. You also traded draft picks for Zadorov. Begsy may not agree with me, but finding like, the ultimate success in the playoffs, they're moving like it. They've moved like it. Who's traded more assets this season than the Vancouver Canucks? Exactly. Not many other teams. So it's really important to get both those guys going. And I don't know, for me, and maybe for you, well, well for you, it, you know, we had the exact same lineups, okay? <laughs> Telepathy off the charts. Henrik and Daniel, who? Who? You, you, you see the same thing. They, yeah, they do call us twins, don't they? Um, you know, we we sound the same, we look the same, all of the above, man. Unbelievable yep, stuff. Yeah, you know, with, with Pedersen and and who are, are his ideal wingers? I, you know, for me personally, I think Hoglander is one of them for sure. Uh, you know, not only are they good friends, but they seem to have good chemistry. I think Hoglander being just a hound on pucks is is really helpful for a guy like Pedersen. He's doing what you know McCann was supposed to be doing. To be honest with you, um, with Lindholm, I just think that's a situation where. They've had moments out there on the ice. Um, but for me, I don't know if Lindholm's oh. necessarily Pedersen's ideal winger. I just think that's the best fit when you look at the Canucks overall. Yeah, I did. Now, going to tonight's game, when you look at uh, Hoaglander and Garland being on the top line, um, I think the interesting thing about that is statistically, look at like at uh, you know the amount of goals they've scored on the ice and their expected goals. You know, Hoaglander and Garland have been statistically this season two of Pedersen's best wingers. Which is interesting, right? Because we don't think of Garland playing there that much. And again, we know Patterson's play was just like a revolving door this season, right? You know, mm -hmm. including Garland, what is it? Garland, Lindholm, Suter, Miller, Lafferty, Besser, Hoglander, Kuzmenko, Mikheyev. What did I list off? Nine guys? 
you know, those are nine guys who have played almost all of them have played almost 100 even strength minutes with Patterson this season. Like, there's been zero consistency there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kuzma goes on a part of four, but, um, you know, of those guys, you know, statistically, again, looking at, you know, what they produced offensively, looking at expected goals, the most successful guys have been Hooglander, Mikheyev, Garland, and Suter. The least successful guys have been Besser and Miller, which is crazy to say. And when I say least successful, I'm talking about their overall game, both in terms of, you know, defensively uh, and their expected goals. Um, so the, the interesting thing about the lotto line that I want to touch on is that, you know, with Miller and Besser, you know, their, their goal is four for 60 is off the charts. Like basically that line produced almost a goal every 10 minutes uh, in the, in terms of the ice time when they were out there, maybe yeah. a goal every 10 to 15 minutes, but you look at their expected goals and their possession stats and, and they suck. So basically that line is capitalizing on all their opportunities, but they are yeah. not creating offense consistently. You know, with Pedersen and JT Miller on the ice together this season, they have an expected goals for percentage of 39%. Oh, my and God. I think we saw nerd. it early in January. Nerd. We saw it early in January, though, right? Like, they had a really hot stretch where they scored, what, like three goals in a period against the Rangers? Yeah. And then later on in that road trip, they just didn't have the same pizzazz together. Yeah. So I think that line really has to blow it off the charts, and the depth has to be stepping up to the point where Tonkin feels comfortable doing that. And I would say that statistically, it hasn't worked out. The lot of line, aside from a lucky stretch where they just buried a ton of goals based on yeah, it wasn't lucky, dude. It was a dominating stretch, man. Okay, here's the thing with the lot of line again, you don't always win the lottery, you know, when you buy a ticket, it happens once in a while, like once or never, actually. That's probably the right way to say it. All in all, though, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's just a button you play, okay? It's a button you press, and if it actually works, I guarantee. Every time the, the lotto line is on, like every game that they play in which they're on, the Canucks are winning that game because they're scoring three or four goals. And then they have to after Demko and Ned. Do the math. And that's a that's a crazy button to play in the playoffs. That's the yeah. truth. If, if, if it works, right? And, if it works, and again, if, I if did, it works you're winning games. I, you're winning games yeah. if it works. You, you want to try it out in the third period of a game where, where you need a boost for sure. But again, when I look at how those three play together this season, there was that really hot stretch, and then there was a few games of you know absolute mediocrity where they weren't creating much, and and they were getting uh, outchanced okay. pretty heavily. Okay, so how much how much do we have to talk about Pedersen uh, needing consistency with his line mates, or the team has to do more for him and support him versus, bro, you're Elias Pedersen, man. You know what I'm saying? Like there are, you know, I, I think a lot of people seen the clip of him talking to the media yesterday and him being kind of annoyed at a question regarding his uh feet not moving which is funny it was so funny it was so funny yeah. you got you got to see that clip i don't want to spoil it for you okay all in all i think it is more than fair to say that Pedersen is is somebody we expect more from like uh, he can be good and the underlying da- data can support that he's been an effective player and all this dirt bro I want that pizzazz. I want that, whoa, look at this guy. I want to see it in my eyes. I do. And that part of the game is definitely not consistent enough. And it hasn't been consistent enough really outside of two months this season. Yeah. And maybe I'll make one more one more nerdy point on this before we uh, before we wrap up the segment. But the underlying data hasn't been, really been that kind of Pedersen this season. In okay. fact, I Thank think you. he's you know, an overrated defensive player for what a lot of people think he is. Like I saw a, a poll from Jay Fresh on Twitter where, you know, fans were voting Pedersen in as like a top 10 Selkie candidate this season. He's been, he's been nowhere near that. And one of the interesting things when I'm looking at the stats, you know, broken down by who are his line mates is that Pedersen's, you know, expected goals for percentage with certain players, almost all those players are better where they're not playing with Pedersen. And that's an indictment on how this guy has not been very good defensively this season. It has not bro, been the same Elias Pedersen defensively. There you go, bro. He, like, I'll say this before we get to break. And just listen to this, people. Elias Pedersen can be twice the player he is right now. And that's saying a lot. But I believe in that. There's a lot more upside offensively. And as Begsy just touched on, because we can see it, and we've seen less of his spectacular defensive plays in general like he can be better two-way as well like there's another level or two that we're missing from Patterson's game and that's why there is some frustration like I get it it's fair 
It's fair. Like, the expectations are high and the standard is high, but we've seen it. And now this season matters. Now, now the games matter. So let's see it again prior to the playoffs. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, can you show us that? Can you just, like, uh, calm us down a bit? Anyways, Trevor, I love you, brother. Who we shout out here on Locked on Canucks? I love you too, you you crazy perv. Okay, let's let's wrap up the show on the other side. Pre-game prophecy for Canucks and Sabres. Before we do that, let's shout out our friends at Robinhood Retirement. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim is of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. The limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is registered broker-dealer. We back, we back talking about the perfect Vancouver Canucks lineup, okay? Perfection. Dude, it's okay for me to expect that. It's all good. It's all good, man. Best coast, West Coast, the city. I want them to win a Stanley Cup, okay? The sun is shining. I'm expecting uh, the most out of this team. And uh, again, look at the math. Look at the stats. Bro, if you trade that many assets in a 12-month span and you're there in the standings, it's kind of cup or bust, right? Sort of, kind of. Anyways, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Bags, doing the most. Uh, join the Discord. Link in the bio. Get in on the conversation. We got, what, 37 people there? 36 people? Let's get to 50 by Friday, and we'll announce a winner on the Discord and on Locked on Canucks regarding uh, that game against the, the LA Kings on Monday, okay? You could get, you could get two tickets. Two tickets. Should we give uh, Should we give people uh, $15, too, with those two tickets so they can get 10 fries or whatever? What was it? What was the thing again? <laughs> Yeah, eight bucks for for ten fries. Yeah, fifteen bucks for ten fries. Yo, stuff, dude, it man. is what it is, man. You gotta chase your dreams, man. Get that money, okay? Whoever's listening to this, dude, go get that money, okay? For real, financial freedom, discipline, live your life, okay? Anyways, speaking of living your life, Bagsy, man, you keep calling me the p word on this program, right? You keep, you've done it twice, and I'm not the person <laughs> who wears a fleece jacket and sunglasses to wreck beach, okay? I've seen the photos, Trevor. <laughs> It's uh, I, like, I like to consider it my masturbating trench coat, but that's uh, that's for another day. That's nuts, man. Anyway, I, uh, I never said I was. I never said I wasn't a perp. Let's let's be real. Whoa, um, do, 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 do. yeah, man. Wreck Beach, man. Okay, you know the sun is shining. We're kind of crazy right now. Uh, pre-game prophecies, okay? Uh, the uh, the the Buffalo Sabers. They're in town. The Buffalo Sabers. They're what, like five <laughs> points out of a playoff spot? But, like, they're, what's they're the math? Ground. They're they're they're, they're kind of desperate. Uh, the Canucks, kind of, sort of, not really, having a tough time. Well, no, no, no uh, kind of, sort of, not really. Yes, they are. They're doing this. They're kind of having a tough time keeping up with desperate teams right now, not playing at that pace, being a, being a little, I think, content with where they are in their standings versus what's happening in-game. You know what I'm saying? They're taking it light. And if they do that tonight against Buffalo, they're going to lose. They got to treat this like they're playing one of the better teams in hockey, and they just got to get back to playing full 60-minute hockey games. Yeah, and you know what? I kind of look at this as like a, a sneaky revenge game in a way, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean in a minute. But uh, like you said, Kyle Buffalo is on a bit of a roll right now. Uh, they won again last night against the Seattle Crack. Uh, I, well, I can't, maybe I can't say on the show, but the Seattle Crack. You know, you know what I was about to say, Canucks fans? Mm -hmm. Um but they again second at a back to back starting Devin Levi tonight who hasn't had a great season. But but you know I look at this as a sticky revenge game and and here's why. You know last season I felt like the Buffalo Sabers effectively ended the Canucks season in, in October. I don't know if you guys remember this, 
But, you know, obviously road trip from hell to start last season. They blow all these multi-goal leads. And then it's like, okay, no, we're coming back home now. Okay, all is going to be good. All is good. We're going to go back home. We're going to beat the Buffalo Sabres. And what happens? We lost 5-1 to one to the Buffalo Sabres on home ice. That was the last time the Buffalo Sabres played at Rogers Arena. And I think for, for myself and other Canucks fans, it was like, oh, my God, we suck. <laughs> you thought maybe they come, you come off the road and they come back home and things are going to be okay. And they just absolutely laid an egg against the Sabres. So, again, the team has changed a lot since then, right? But uh, I think you want to see the Canucks, you know, not lay an egg tonight. And mm -hmm. I don't expect them to. I expect them to win. I, I'm going to say it's going to be close, though. I think, you know, sometimes when you get a guy like Devin Levi who struggled a bit, you know, they those guys seem to have tend to have good games against the Canucks. At least that's historically been the case. So, uh, and Buffalo's playing good hockey right now. So I'm going to say the Canucks eke it out. Um, uh, a 3 1 win. 3 1? Come on, man. You hate when I do that, but I'm just trying to be real. No, to be no, real fair enough. People. Fair enough. I can't, I can't like be, uh, <laughs> what are you, you, what are the Canucks are going to win 7 0 right now. I can't be pessimistic about like my views on the lineup and then believe that they're going to win like 7 1. Unless, you know, they have a bad first period and Tockett presses the blunder again and it goes kind of the way that we alluded to earlier in this game, uh, in this episode, minus uh, Dakota Joshua, obviously. Uh, yeah, again, the Canucks just need to respect Buffalo. Uh, they didn't respect Colorado when they were up 3 0, and they didn't respect the Capitals. That's the truth. They got to start doing that. Anyways, let's get to the comments before we get out of here. Uh, this is this is the uh, the one that makes a lot of sense. Okay, Cooley, one not to Cooley, uh, Cooley ninety eight. Uh, you need to go throughout some adversity during the regular season to succeed in the playoffs. I agree with that, uh, but the playoffs are actually coming up pretty close here. I feel like in the last six weeks, seven weeks, and even if you sprinkle in like November, early December, uh, the Canucks have gone through some adversity. Okay, they have. They have. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Then they lost a bunch of games in like February or whatever, right? And now they're going through some adversity again here. Blowing a three-goal lead to Colorado, losing against Washington. Let's uh, let's go on a run, okay? Let's go on a run. Uh, look at Mr. Wales, six to two. And I want to get to one more comment. I can't find it, but I saw it, okay? Did I start? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. No, I didn't. To Foley, man. To Foley, picking up Geno's for the Winnipeg Jets, okay? Yeah, I, I know the Canucks haven't played a lot of games in uh in March, 4-1-1 one, one in their last six games in their last two weeks, but uh, man, oh, man. Man, oh, man. To Foley, scoring goals, I'm not going to front. You know how I'm, I'm kind of like that insecure Canucks fan? Like, I'll go watch Oilers highlights and just, like, see if they lose and try to feel away, right? I used to watch some other things late at night, but now I'm watching that. I'm kind of watching these Jets highlights, hoping that Toffoli stops scoring goals. Yeah, that, that one does hurt a bit. And uh, I don't know if we'll go through it before the end of the regular season or if this is an off-season thing, but, uh, you know, I have been doing some of the cap-friendly stuff and my projections for contracts. And, you know, when I look at this team heading into next season, you know, they could, they could probably use one, maybe even two more top six wingers, depending on how you feel about Ilya Mikheyev. Or Dakota Joshua, or if you want Bluger or, or uh, Joshua and Garland on the third line, so it's going to be an interesting uh, uh, to see how they handle that in the offseason. But again, we got playoff hockey to get to before that, baby, and we're going to yeah. have you covered for all the games, all the reactions here on Locked On Canucks. A quick mm -hmm. shout out to uh, Rev Trev over at Kempner Canucks. I saw him on the live feed as well, doing great work. Go check out his channel. Uh, but again, for our show, we got to get out of here. Shout out to the everydayers, occasional listeners, first time listeners, new subscribers, and those of you who joined us here on the live YouTube show. We love each and every one of you, your families and your dogs too. And, and Rev Trev, Kevin Cucks, we even love you, even though you called me awkward earlier in the show. But hey, yeah, you, know, you are I, awkward I, I, I making dirty moments. jokes, making moments. dirty jokes, man. <laughs> Wreck Beach gets this guy going. It is what it is. Hey, Vancouver's a little weird sometimes, okay? Hey, speaking of. Uh, not being weird, look at this. Okay, Ryan Hernandez, he's been probably the most optimistic Canucks fan over the stretch outside of JS, okay? Look what he's saying right now. And this is the same dude who's going for walks and telling Mother Nature, right? The Canucks are going to win the Stanley Cup. The Canucks are going to win the Stanley Cup, right? He's one of those guys. You ever see, like, one of those guys on the streets holding the signs? He's one of those guys. Anyways, he's saying that Pedersen is going to impress in the playoffs. Look at him in the SHL playoffs from years and years and years ago. Look at him in the 2020 bubble playoffs, right? I have no doubt in my mind that Pedersen is, again, twice the player he is. 
uh, that he's that he's showing right now. And I, I also don't have a doubt in my mind because uh, Quinn Hughes for the Conn Smythe, we're playing in June and we're only going to get to both those things. And Pedersen is elite. He'll be back. He'll be back very soon. Can it happen today, though? Uh, Begsy, sign us out. Well, can Pedersen be back pretty soon? We don't know, probably. But one thing's for sure, we'll be back pretty soon. But for now, I'm Trevor Beggs. That guy is Kyle Bowen, flashing the guns. Some call him Flex Bowen. And hey, guess what? You've been listening to Lock on Canucks. Subscribe. Hit the like button. It really helps us out a lot. I'm going to take my girlfriend to Cactus Club. And you can help me by hitting the like button. Your Locked on Canucks. Your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.